In this video, I will show you how to use your A10 Mini to automatically loop through all your cameras without using any hands. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. I've been a huge fan of the A10 Mini ever since it launched last year. One of the questions I often get is whether you can use the A10 Mini to get a multi-angle stream of yourself without pressing any buttons. The idea would be that you would want to stream yourself doing a musical performance or something else where your hands are already busy and you don't have your hands free to actually press the buttons to switch camera angles. It'd be nice if there was a way to just have it automatically switch camera angles on some sort of timed schedule so that you could just get a multi-angle shot without having to control it yourself. Before we get into this, I know what you're thinking. My audio in here is not great right now. You're right, and I know that, and I'm doing this anyway because I wanna make this video today and I don't yet have enough stuff in my new studio space to properly do sound treatment. So sorry my audio is not great, but on the plus side, you get to learn something today. All right, so at first glance, it looks like the A10 Mini does not have this feature built in out of the box. Some of the other hardware switchers I've used do have an automatic looping feature built in with just a button press, and it looks like the A10 Mini doesn't have that at first glance, but I'm gonna show you how you can actually recreate that feature in the A10 Mini using macros. All right, first I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna dive deeper and actually go through it step by step. So the high level overview is you're gonna use the software control app on your computer to program a macro. That macro is going to switch between each camera in sequence and adding a pause in between each. Then we're going to play back that macro on a loop. Then we're gonna look at some advanced ways of tuning that macro to better control the timing of each camera switch or to even make it look like the camera is switching at random intervals. All right, let's get started now. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download the Blackmagic software control app for your ATEM. Go to blackmagicdesign.com and click on support. Then click on ATEM live production switchers. Now at first it doesn't look like anything happened, but what it did is it filtered down below so that the options you see are only for the ATEM. So look for the one called ATEM switchers update and download the one for your computer. All right, now you can launch the software control app on your computer. If your ATEM is plugged in over USB, it'll find it automatically. If it's plugged in over the network, you may have to enter the IP address or it might also be able to find it on the network. Either way is fine, it doesn't matter how it's connected to the ATEM. Once you're in the software control app, it'll look like this. These buttons give you controls over which input to switch to and your upstream and downstream keyers and everything that your ATEM can do can be controlled by this software app. This is also how you can create macros. So go up to the menu bar and click on macros. This opens up this little window. Click on the plus icon, give the macro a name, and then click record. When you see this red border around the interface, that means it is now recording a macro. And anything you press in the software interface will be recorded into that macro. So we're now ready to create the macro that we're gonna eventually play back on a loop. So go to this top program section and click on the first camera. That's going to record that camera switch into the macro. Then go up to the middle here and click add pause. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a pause which will pause the macro for a few seconds, which will sort of hold this angle before we then switch to the next camera. The duration here is given in seconds and frames. So go ahead and type in like three seconds and then click add pause. Now click the second camera. That's going to switch to the second camera angle. Click add pause again, type in another three seconds and click add pause. And now we'll just keep doing this for the rest of the camera angles that we want to include in this loop. If you have only three cameras, you just stop after the third. If you have four cameras, you can make it go through all four. Make sure you press add pause after the last camera angle as well, because we, again, we want to hold that camera for three seconds at the end of the loop. Once you're done, click stop recording. That saves the macro into the device. So at this point, your macro is created and you can now run it. Switch over to the run tab, press this recall and run button, which means that as soon as you tap one of the macros, it'll start playing immediately. Then here's the key. This little circle icon means that it will play this macro on repeat. So toggle that on and now you're ready to actually run the macro and it'll just keep looping. So let's try it out now. Go ahead and tap the macro and you should now see it switching to each camera, holding for the three seconds and continuing on. When it gets to the end, it'll then hold that for three seconds and then start back at the beginning playing your first camera again. To stop the macro, you have to actually press the stop button. You can still be pressing anything else in the software control interface, but until you press stop, it's just gonna keep running that macro. Okay, so your macro is created, but you wanna make sure that you can now get back to this again. So the easiest way to do that is to go up into the file menu and press save startup state. What that's going to do is actually 
bake in all the settings of your current state of the switcher into the A10. And then when it reboots, it will restore all of those settings and you'll be back to the current state. The only thing that's not saved in that is the actual media in the media pool. So if you do have images loaded, those unfortunately don't get saved into the device. So this is the easiest way to do it because now you're all ready to go and the next time you plug this in, it'll boot up and your macro will be there. There's a slightly more flexible option that you have as well. And that is to save these settings out as an XML file so that you can restore them to other ATEMs or save different states of macros and switch between these shows. So to do that, you go to file, click save as, and give this file a name, and that's going to create an XML file on your computer. This also does include the media in your media pool, which means when you restore from one of these XML files, all of your images do get restored back into the ATEM. All right, so that's the basics. By now you should understand how to create the macro, play it back on a loop, and you can even now see how you would change the duration of each camera angle while you created the macro. But I wanna show you one more thing that gives you even more control over how this works. And we can even make it look like the cameras are switching at random in case you don't want it to look like just a sequence with a fixed timing. So the idea is that we're gonna basically create a really long macro where the intervals between the camera switches are randomized and the cameras may not even switch in the same order. And that way when we play it back, it'll just go for a really long time and then eventually loop back, hopefully long enough where the viewer doesn't realize it's looped back. So it would take a really long time to program this in by hand. So I'm gonna show you a little trick I use to speed up creating the macro and also being able to edit it a little bit easier. So we're gonna start with the macro we already created, which is the sort of simple one of just the four cameras in order with the fixed three seconds between them. Remember we saved this XML file, so we're gonna go ahead and open that up and see what's inside. Now to do this, you're gonna to wanna to use a text editor, not something like Microsoft Word. So Notepad on a PC or text edit on a Mac, those are all fine. Any plain text editor will work. So let's open this up. This is an XML file. It looks a little bit scary at first, but it's not that bad, I promise. You'll get the hang of it after working with it for a little bit. This is where the macro is that we've created. Inside this macro section, there's a bunch of these op lines. Op is short for operation, and these are the individual actions that we took in the software control app that have now been written into the XML file. So you'll notice a pattern here. This macro is alternating between program input and macro sleep operations. That's because we chose a camera angle and then clicked add pause. So what you can do now is just take these and copy and paste them a whole bunch of times to make a really long macro. And you can make it as long as you want. You can copy and paste it you know, dozens of times to make a really long macro that'll last for minutes. And then you can go in here and change the order of the cameras. You can randomize it, you can change the durations for each one to make it look like it's shuffling around and not just on a loop. So if you make it long enough, probably like a minute or two, and then change the durations and change the camera angles in here, people won't really notice it's on a loop because by the time they get to the end of it, it's been a couple minutes and then it starts back over and it's just gonna keep looking like it's random. So now when you play back this macro, it's going to look like it's picking random camera angles for random amounts of time and it'll look like somebody else is controlling the switching and it's not just your one person show. So there you have it. That is how to create an infinite looping automatic camera switching macro on your A10 mini. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it gives you some new ideas of things you can do with your A10 mini. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It helps more than you might think. I've been doing weekly live streams about the A10 mini, which have been a lot of fun. It's a live Q&A session. You just come in, ask questions, and I answer them on the stream. So join me on the next live stream. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I go live. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. And hopefully next time, I'll have a little bit better sound treatment in the studio space. All right, bye.